Hello everyone. How are you? I hope you are good and you are doing well. How is the family? How is work? How is life? Mm, I hope you are doing well and things are really going on good. Nice to meet you. I just want to say that um, I am praying for you. I've been praying for you. We are doing our fasting and prayer and if you have a prayer point, drop it. I will also continue to pray for you, but I'm doing it for you. Don't be reassured that I am praying for you. So, I am going to um, be looking at a very important question. And I wish I can see you, but I'm going to ask you in this video. So, what is true religion? What is true religion? So we have seen in the world we are now, we have Christian, Muslim, Judaism, Hindu, Sikh, uh, there are so many of them. Now the question is, does God have a religion? In all that you have learned, in all of your exposure in this life, in all knowledge you have acquired, the question is, does God actually have a religion? Which religion does God approve of? So if let's let's put Jesus now. If Jesus comes today, will he go to church? Will he go to mosque? Or will he go to the temple of Judaism? Will he go to sect? Where, which religion will Jesus actually go if Jesus happened to come today? Which one will he identify himself with? Isn't that funny? That we are giving ourselves names. I'm a Muslim. I'm a, yeah, and this one says I'm a Christian. I'm a, um, I'm a Jewish. I'm Jesus and that. Does this really take us to heaven? Do we have religion in heaven? The answer is no. There's no religion in heaven. The Jesus Christ that I know no doesn't have any religion. Yes. He doesn't he is not a Christian. Neither is he a Muslim. He's not he is not identifying with any religion. What he did was to go and preach the gospel yes he went to the temple the jewish temple and preached the gospel and remember that is where they sought to kill him and that's how they finally killed him but he was going away preaching and preaching and preaching the word of god yes i didn't see um that jesus has any religion but jesus has what we call true religion so now, Jesus said in the book of James 1 verse 27, He said, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless, pure and faultless, is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by this world. Very short verse. James chapter 1 verse 27. Are we going to look at it? Isn't that funny? When, when we have so many religious sects and segments and factions all over the place. But God says the religion, Jesus said the religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. Look after the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Wow. So which means that a religion that has faults. So the one we have here, the current ones here, any religion that does not look after the orphans whether they are Christian, they are Jews, they are Judaism, they are sect, whatever they are, 
as long as they don't look after the orphans and they don't look after the widows when they are in distress and they don't keep themselves from pollution or from sin they are god does not accept their religion can you believe that so when people say we are christians and yes i'm one we are christians and christian jesus did not uh, form christianity he did not jesus did not establish christianity christianity was established by people living in antioch after jesus christ has ascended into heaven and gone the disciples were still carrying out in the um, doctrine that jesus christ left behind helping the poor helping the widow protecting themselves from being uh, um, from being polluted from evil sharing the gospel feeding the thousands and thousands of people doing miracles raising the dead and helping the widows in distress that's what the apostles were doing because that was what jesus was doing and that is why the people call um the apostle um christians christians mean christ-like that these people are walking after the precept of christ they are doing exactly what jesus christ did when he was in his earthly ministry so they named they named them christian after christ then after the disciples have died and the world keep rolling rolling to 21st century where we are do we really have christians anymore do we can we boast of that name how many how many of christians are actually christ-like how many of them how many christians now are having a religion that god our father accept as pure and faultless when something is faultless it doesn't have no blemish how many christians are looking after orphans among all this big religion and if, if i'm talking about christian other religion you have to think about yourself if you belong to other groups sit back and do this reflection reflect wow a religion that is accepted by god is a as pure and faultless is the one that look after orphans that's number one how many orphans have you have you looked after have you sponsored them have you taken care of them have you given them food have you given them water have you given them a place to live if you have done that that is part of true religion if you have not done that and you have built a massive church and furnished it with golden apparatus and all the cherubim and all the seraphims and go around and burn incense collecting big offerings even somebody is a criminal bring the offering as long as they pay in tithe in the name of the lord you collect it those things you are doing you are playing what we call religion but it's not a pure religion and god does not even he said i didn't write it to james 1 verse 27 religion that god our father accept which means your religion is not accepted by god your religion of being posh driving in a posh car wearing the latest suit buying uh, i'm not good in name of cars all those uh, uh, posh roll roll royce and all those cars people are buying all those things range rovers and all those cars living in a mansion and acquiring wealth the way you want to use the church to be your milk industry you milk the members you milk them every day get things by force from them and make sure they give the offering and tithe if they don't give you you kick them out you don't pay attention to them nobody pays offering no one pays tithe they, they are not relevant in your church you don't even care even if someone has done money laundering even if someone have have, have have gone through um what we call arm robbery 
and they have stolen money, as long as they come to church and pay their tithe, and they give the huge money, tomorrow you make them your deputy, because they are bringing big money. We are wasting our time. There is no more time. There is no more time. We don't have time left. Listen, we are playing. We are just jokers. Oh. We are pure jokers. Because what Jesus did, ah, Isaiah 53 says that Jesus was acquainted with sorrow. He, said he was a man of sorrow. Everybody see grief on his face because he was burdened about the sin of the world and look for everything that he can do to, to, to deliver the world from sin. He never sinned. He never committed no fault. He has no, no fault was found in him. But he was looking after the orphans. He said, let the children come to me. Forbid them not. What do you see in churches now? Ushers are standing everywhere in churches. If a child is crying, the pastor say, take that child out. And the child is taken out. Ushers are standing. If a child mistakenly run away from the mom and come to the altar, they will immediately tell the pastor, say, take that child. In fact, they have put a law. Children cannot um, come to that church. They can't run. They cannot eat in that church because the church is pure and cleaner than the children themselves. So the children cannot eat. They can't eat biscuit. They can't. They are not free in that church. But when you compare that practice with the practice of Jesus, Jesus said, "Let the little children come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God." But today we will say, "Let the children go away, for they are the one that are uh, 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 denting our church. Uh, the one polluting the church." Ha! Huh. Where are we going to? If Jesus land now at Mount Olive and come down and say he want to worship, which church will Jesus go? Which temple will he go? Which mosque will Jesus go? It doesn't belong to any religion, no, if you don't know. As long as you, are, you pay more attention to the carpet of your church, you don't pay attention to the children, you don't pay attention to the orphans. In fact, when the orphans come with their dirty clothes, people will don't let them in in your in, in, in through the gate. Some churches they will say that of that child that is coming very dirty is a witch. It should not be allowed in. Have you seen? Have you in throughout Jesus' ministry? Did he give some people grass to eat? Did he give them snake to drink? Snake oil to drink? He gave them food to eat. So, pastors, ask yourself, where am I? We, we are playing we are playing religion. How many orphans do you help? How many widows in their distress have you helped them? The widows. No husband. Rather than helping the widow, you are collecting from the widows. A widow is supposed to come to church and have food and have everything, get their house bill paid, get things done for them, but now widows are paying offering. Where is this offering going to? Jesus, I didn't, Jesus did not receive offering, oh, but he had to go to, 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 to the mouth of the fish and remove um, uh, uh, the, 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 the money needed to pay tight. Today, who can remove that from fish? The power of miracles have disappeared. All we are doing is money, 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 money. We have to be careful because this religion is not taking anybody anywhere. We should come off this religion and go and do what we call pure and faultless religion, taking care of the orphans and helping the widows when they are in distress and keep yourself being polluted by the world. Pollution, the churches are polluted. I'm so sorry. Altars and altars have creeped and entered the church of God. Evil altars have taken over the church of God. Greed, selfishness have taken over the church of God. Pride have taken over the church of God. Have they polluted the church of God? God doesn't belong to God doesn't belong to any any religion. 
God, Jesus is not a Pentecostal, he's not a, 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 he's not a, a, a Catholic, he's not Anglican. He, he's, he's not. He's the God of the whole nation. And he only is only looking for people who will serve him in spirit and in truth, who will um, serve God in, in a way that is pure and acceptable before God. So what we are doing is fake religion. We are doing false religion. So it's time for us to move from false religion to do something that is acceptable to God. Right? Keep yourself from being polluted by the world. But we are allowing ourselves to be polluted by the world and we pray and ask for the mercy of God to help every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus has no religion. Thank you.